The Volvo XC40 has already proved that it's a great family SUV as a petrol, diesel and a plug-in hybrid. But now it's entering entirely new territory for Volvo. This new fully electric XC40 is the first of five EVs that Volvo is launching in the next five years. And the manufacturer wants electric cars to account for half of its global sales by 2025. And those bold ambitions start here. This is the Volvo XC40 Recharge P8. And as you can see, it does look very similar to the fuel-powered versions of the XC40, which, by the way, you can save £2,500 off by clicking on the link at the top of your screen. But now, let's point out the differences between this fully electric version and the other versions of the XC40 that we've already seen. And really, the main thing to point out is this grille at the front here, because no matter what exterior colour you go for, you get a colour-coded covered grille, which does look quite nice, doesn't it? Other differences include having some recharge logos at the back of the car, and there's also exclusive alloy wheel designs, and there's a charge port where you would have otherwise found the petrol cap. Now, power comes from a 78 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery, and it's exactly the same one that you'll find in the Polestar 2. So although this is Volvo's first fully electric car, the sub-brand Polestar was a couple of months earlier with its own fully electric car. And if you want to charge the battery, then when you find a 150 kilowatt charger, it'll go from 0 to 80% in just 40 minutes, but obviously those chargers are pretty rare at the minute. So from a home wall box charger, you'll need an overnight charge to get the same. The battery is under the floor, which means there is a slightly reduced ground clearance of 175 millimeters compared to 211 millimeters of the regular model. But the space inside and the boot capacity is unchanged. So you still have loads of space in the back, plus a new handy spot in the front to keep the charging cables. Inside, just like the outside, it's very similar to the other XC40s that we're used to. But there are a few changes, like this new infotainment system. Now, it's been developed with Google and Android, and it's essentially the same software that we've already used in the new Polestar 2. But the look of it is slightly different, and it's not a world away from what we're used to in previous Volvos, but now you get Google Maps as standard, you also get Google Assistant to help with voice command functions, and it's quick to respond to touch inputs, it looks slick, it's got a nice layout, but one slight criticism remains being that the icons for the submenus are just a bit on the small side. It'd be more helpful if they were bigger so that they're easier to hit on the move. You also have an upgraded digital driver display, so it's still a nice big screen, but the graphics and the resolution is better than before, so that's really good. And also you have some EV-specific functions that it shows you on there, like how much battery range you've got left, rather than how empty your fuel tank is. Elsewhere in the interior, it does feel really nice quality in here. The Audi e-tron is still probably the benchmark for electric car interior quality, but this XC40 is certainly among the best, although down here it is slightly cheaper feeling, but still really classy, really good quality, which you'd hope for a car this expensive. So the Volvo XC40 P8 on the road, what's it like? Well, the first thing to say is that it is very quick. This is one of the most powerful Volvos ever made, in fact, because it's got two electric motors and both of them have 201 brake horsepower. So the total system output is 402 brake horsepower and it's all wheel drive. So all that power, all that torque means that this is a seriously, seriously quick car. Quick enough to go from naught to 62 miles per hour in just 4.9 seconds. So this is pretty comfortably the quickest XC40 in the lineup, which is impressive because it's also incredibly heavy. So the lightest XC40, with a petrol engine weighs about 1,600 kilograms, but this is more than 2,100 kilograms, which is pretty chunky. Not that the weight matters in a straight line, because the acceleration really is enough to properly pin you back in your seat. Sure, it's not as quick as a Tesla Model 3 performance, but it's still quicker than many other electric cars on sale. But you don't necessarily want to drive this car incredibly quickly because it's tall and it's heavy. So if you do go around a corner, relatively quickly, then there's quite a lot of body lean. It doesn't feel completely out of control, but still, you get the feeling that this car's made more for gentle driving around town or longer distance motorway cruising because it does have a good ride. It is impressive in that respect. The only problem being that in a similar way to the plug-in hybrid XC40 that we've driven before, potholes and broken roads do very easily upset the suspension. 
with some hard, uncomfortable thuds as you pass over things that an Audi e-tron would glide over. It's not enough to detract too much though from what is a quiet and quick EV. There are a few different settings that you have for the car as well, but to get to them, you click on this settings button down here and then you're presented with this pretty overwhelming manual instead of just some nice friendly icons. It's all really small text that's really difficult to read. So if you're not familiar with the system, that is quite overwhelming and not especially easy to use on the move. But if you do go into driving, you can turn on one pedal drive. So that means, like we're quite used to in lots of electric cars now, if you lift off the accelerator, the car will slow itself down and it will eventually bring it to a complete stop, which is great around town because it means you just hardly ever have to touch the brake pedal. But the thing is now, in the electric car world, if you really want to grab headlines and grab the attention of the mainstream, then you've got to have a product that's either really cheap or has the ability to travel really far on a single charge. And this XC40, the first versions that come to the UK are going to start from around just under £60,000, which definitely isn't cheap, no matter what kind of realm your bank balance operates in. And the WLTP range of this car is rated up to 260 miles, which is good, and it's among certainly the better ranges available of new EVs, but it's not really a properly eye-popping range because now we're seeing cars like the VW ID3 and Tesla Model 3 before this as well that have come with ranges over 300 miles. So that is seriously impressive. And in this XC40, because it doesn't offer that, it means that it doesn't have that instant kind of class changing revolutionary impact. It's still a very good electric car. So it's got a nice ride, really like this interior, good quality. It feels plush throughout and the acceleration really, really, really is very impressive. But it's not a complete game changer. That doesn't stop it from being a very good electric car though. This first edition launch version is more expensive than a Tesla Model 3 Performance and not far off twice the cost of a Kia e Nero, which admittedly isn't as nice inside, but will go further on a full charge. So with cheaper, less powerful electric XC40s on the horizon, it's clear that they will likely be the models to recommend in this lineup. Get a great deal on a new or used car from whatcar.com, make sure you're subscribed and let us know what you think of the car in the comments below.